Right, quick extra uh, one for you. A um, bit about uh, FTTC, VDSL or BT Infinity. Oh god, don't look in the picture. A lot of you will be familiar with it. A lot of you will understand the way it works and you'll understand what you've got at your end. This is the kit you don't see and it's a kit we use a lot of. This is a Huawei Smart AX MA5616 DSLAM with one vectoring VDSL2 Plus card and two standard VDSL2s. Um, this is similar but not the same as you'd find in one of the BT green cabinets at the side of the road. You've got a power management unit to go with it as well. Uh, yes, that looks horrible. It's 24 volts. Ignore it. Um, so each one of these pairs is a phone line. There's 32 on each of these. Uh, the vectoring board is actually capable of taking into account adjacent signals. Um, it doesn't sound much and it's actually quite important because as you'll see in a minute all these go out together to your phone lines and um, what can happen especially running at higher speeds like 17a is pair 1 will sync up at 7 to 17a quite happily pair 2 will come up that will sync to 17a and pair 1 will fall off the net um, and that will carry on with the adjacent pairs and you'll end up with a very unstable connection the vectoring system allows the card to work out what's going out on that pair and then what's going out on the adjacent pairs and actually taking that into account. So we don't use this one much because we have no voice inputs on this. So this would require a separate filter rack or filter array um, to combine the analog pop signal with the VDSL and send it down to you. It's basically the same as a micro filter. It is the same thing, but we're using it backwards. So if we wander around here, we yes, it's a tip in here. So anyone in the UK will recognize these. We have lots and lots of these. In fact, we've got 48 of these, which will all be used at an event. These are the BT VDSL modems. Um, they are Huawei's. We do use both the Huawei and the ECI. There is an ECI up here. The ECI's run um, OpenWRT. The Huawei's are actually left with their own firmware. Um, we do this mainly because this combination of this modem, this hardware, this cabling setup has been tested around the UK. There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these setups and they're known to work. Uh, we have these two here are going to be used as camera slaves. Um, these are wired to the BBU ports on the back, which if we grab that ECI, uh, is that port there. Um, we do actually have the pinouts for them, we know how to talk to them and with the updated firmware on these that's not a problem. So these sit there quite happily managed and in the event that we lose power, uh, apparently we're getting about, we've got about four hours out of this one so far. We will be looking at these packs in another video because they are uh, quite blatantly not what they say they are. The 6800 6, milliamp hour is bollocks, that's been fudged, we'll cover that later. But anyway. So the first stop is out of your modem into this little box here. This is a micro filter, you'll recognize it. Uh, the ADSL ones do work with VDSL, there's not really much different. And then from there we go into what would be your master socket. Um, obviously we don't have a master socket here and then that goes into this mess here, which is the equivalent of uh, the junction box inside your house. And then we're off into this great big hose all the way around there around there through that lot round and into this so this mess is pretty much again what you'll find in the BT cabinet different technology we use the Versus because we know them and they're a lot easier to configure than the Huawei's um, and uh, this is where the magic happens so your phone lines are coming in on here into this port and if we go to the one underneath you'll see that's marked as VDSL. Inside here is a set of filters which you'll know, focus which does the same as the micro filter in reverse and then the VDSL modems. Uh, we've got one out there I'm not sure what that is we might have a battery pack gone yeah we've got a battery pack just finished. Um, this does the job of putting the VDSL signal on top of the phone line um, we've only got one connection in here, but it's mainly because we're testing. We haven't configured these as what's called a lag group yet, which means if we plug both of these into the switch, we'll get a broadcast on. Oh, we found that one out the hardware this morning because I didn't realise they came that way. Then, 
coming out here, this mess here, which we follow down, is all the analog phone lines. Now, for BT, these analog phone lines will be coming in from the exchange. Um, they'll be heading off to the MDF in your local exchange, and then it goes into BT's network. We're not doing that. We have this device, Mediatrix FXO, which produces 24 telephone lines for us, and we give it an Ethernet connection, and uh, that's that. So this bit here is pretty much what you know that represents what you've got in a green cabinet. Um, some providers are now starting to use FXOs in the cabinets. Um, there's no real pressing reason not to. Um, the argument also exists that you're you're breaking the network up further. Um, you know, it's more distributed. It's less likely to be a problem. What would generally happen net? Um, at this stage now network wise um, you would either have a fibre module in here um, or you would use this as what's called a link link, aggreg uh, yeah, type teeth in, link aggregation group or lag um, which allow these beh to behave as one network or you may even split multiple VLANs across these then the fibre would go out to a optical um, splitter or an opt optical termination um, and then off to the exchange. In our case, we're going down on gigabit, straight down to this monster switch down here, and then via bi-directional fiber, off to what would be our exchange, which is actually the pile of trash on my desk. And you can see the fiber just popping in there. So that is basically all there is to it. Um, it's quite, ADSL is the same. It's quite mystical. It's quite shrouded in uh, secrecy and a lot of um, what's the word? A lot of misinformation about it. It is actually quite simple. There is nothing complex about it. You can get on eBay. You can buy these units. Most of them are command line driven, um, which is truly horrific unless you know what you're doing. Um, but they're easily configurable and. Using this takes our it takes our network speed down, depending on where we're going, down to as low as 8 meg. But it takes our range up into dozens of kilometres, which if we're doing a big site like Great Dorset, is exactly what we need. We don't need lots of speed, we need lots of slow, long distance endpoints. And it's the best way of doing that. Um, Fibre's great. I mean, we could go this route with these. Um, you know they work they do the job the trouble is is every one of these endpoints if there's just a phone at an endpoint you don't need power if there's just a modem you need very little power um, whereas when you're looking at fiber not only do you need power you need a clean environment you need good power and you know the modem is 10 quid it's 10 quid alone for the bi-directional transceiver and then there's the fibre. It's horrible to work with in the field. You know, for the environment we're working in, it's dusty, it's nasty, it's gritty. It's going to get used for a couple of weeks and then it's not going to get used again until next year. It's not the right solution. Whereas copper, it used to be cheap, it's not as cheap as it was, but it's easy. I mean, we've got reels of cable kicking around and we can put this in quickly and easy. So it has its uses. Anyway, I'm rambling. So that's what you find on the other end of your VDSL modem. Sorry for the camera footage. Um, I will get used to this phone at some point. And uh, we'll start getting you updated more frequently. Bye.